to yubayyinu ma fi nafsihi, to articulate what's in his soul. It's the ability to actually speak what, what is in your heart. And what is that? Does language precede meaning or does meaning precede language? In other words, do we need language to express meaning or is language the result of a pre-existent meaning? And our scholars argued on the side of meaning, that meaning precedes language. Al-ma'ani qabl al-mabani. Meanings precede the vehicles of meaning. And, and when you get into aqidah, there's huge discussions about what is the nature of kalam Allah. Is it the meanings, or is, is it the uncreated meanings, or is it the actual vehicle for those meanings? Or is it both, but from different perspectives? These, these are long debates in, in that tradition. So the, the analysis of language is an analysis that can, can be done to any language in the world. Every language has grammar. Darija has grammar. If you, if you look at uh, Darija or Ebonics in the United States, we have a, a type of, um, uh, of uh, a common language amongst uh, a minority community in the United States that they speak and they understand. And it, it's, it, it, it moves, it evolves, it changes, but it has a grammar and it can be a analyzed. Creole has a grammar. Pidgin languages have grammars. Every language has a grammar. There are certain languages that are profound civilizational languages. And, and these languages, because of the nature of their traditions, a certain continuity takes place. So Sanskrit is one of those languages. Chinese is one of those languages. The, uh, the, 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 the Hebrew language, the Arabic language, these are ancient languages. Um, and in those languages are embedded profound world views. If you, if you study the Chinese language, in the ideograms, there are literally cosmologies that are articulated in their ideograms. So you, you can analyze them. If you look at Hebrew, the same is true. There are, there are cosmologies embedded. I'll give you one example. If you look at the word for human being in, in Arabic, the, the word that means human that's shared by male and female is called insan. And many of the philologists argue that there's not a plural. Some of them say that insanitun is a, I mean a, a feminine form. But most say insan is like mensch. It includes the male and the female. Insan, the, 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 the meaning of insan comes from uns, which is intimacy. That the human is, a, is an intimate uh, creature. It needs to have intimacy to survive. If it doesn't have intimacy, it dries up and dies as a, as a creature. It needs to have uns. And then it's also the same word, insan, is the word for pupil of the eye. So the insan, the bu'bu, the insan is the pupil of the eye. And one of the things that we know that when people are experiencing uh, intimacy, the pupil dilates. It, it opens up. So there's an opening of the insan, that humans, when they're in experience intimacy, they open up, they, 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 they get in shirah, they expand. And the highest intimacy is intimacy with the divine. That the intimacy of ad uns billah, to have intimacy with the divine. And this is the greatest expansion, the in shirah that occurs. So, Another, just to show you the cosmology embedded in Arabic, another word for I is Ain. Now Ain means essence. It, it means the source. 
It's also used for a spring. An ayn is the life-giving for the Arabs. The, the, the ayn of water is the life-giving source. And so there, there's something embedded in that, that understanding that indicates that the eye, the, the secret of the eye of seeing, that it's related to the essence of man, that we were actually created for mushahada. We're created for witnessing. Like our existence is there to witness the divine. And that's why the, the essence of the human being is shahada, which means witnessing. Shahada is witnessing. So, Ainul Insan, the eye of the human being and the essence of the human being is for shahada. It's to witness. So this is the nature of that. You can get into that. Now, when, when you study grammar, you find that there's basically two concepts in grammar. There's the concept of substance, and there's the concept of time. Substance is articulated through, uh, through uh, quality and quantity, through adjectives, through nouns, adverbs, these all tell us uh, uh, the quality of something. He ran swiftly. So swiftly is telling us something about the nature of the running. But running is time. You, you, verbs are in time. So you have time and you have place. Right? These, and this is, the human being has two orientations. Orientation to time and place. So when a physician wants to, to look at a, a student, they ask them, uh, I mean a, a, a patient, they want to orient them to time and place. So they'll say, who's the president? And then they'll say, where are you? And then they know that they're in their right mind because they have that orientation. That's language, time and place. That's language.